And at this time, we're going to ask our pastor, Reverend Dr. Hinton, would he come on the scene? Amen. And as we await an awesome lesson tonight, hallelujah, on stewardship, on stewardship. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Amen. Good evening to everybody. I hope everybody's had a great day. Uh, what a great devotion. We thank God for those who participate. And of course, we always love when little Miss Bailey leads us in such a yeah. fervent way. You know, it's it's amazing. She's always so readily excited to, to sing praises to our God. And so we're grateful for that. The Bible says, and a child shall lead the way. So we're grateful uh, for the example to know that Springfield has wonderful children that will continue to do great things. Amen. All right, I'm going to jump right in tonight. I'm going to tell you up front, let me go ahead and give my disclaimer. I have so much information. So I've been trying to figure out, so here's my dilemma. I've been trying to figure out how to cram it all into this month. Um, and though we have five Sundays, we only have four Wednesdays. And so uh, I've really been pushing hard to try to, you know, get it in. I know this is the second Wednesday. So I'm going to do my best to try to get through it tonight without rushing through it, but try to make sure that it is understood. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and stop making my disclaimers so that we can jump right in. <laughs> All right, let's jump right in. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Slide show. Share screen. All right, share. Okay. All right, and all I need to do now is put it on my slideshow. All right, so we're jumping right back in. Now, of course, we know that last week we laid the foundation for stewardship. Now, I pray that you've been blessed the last couple weeks, well, last two Sundays, uh, for our time of sharing. And so we're going to jump right in, kind of where we left off on Sunday and where we'll pick up this Sunday. I've been trying to make sure that the teaching has been systematic and the preaching has been in line with the teaching as well, uh, so that we can kind of move forward by, by faith. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, of course, we are still in our series on stewardship, kingdom stewardship. And I, I, I have a different set of questions tonight uh, because we're moving beyond stewardship. Remember, we said stewardship is time, talent, treasures relationships, so forth and so on. Uh, but tonight, we, we're going to ask some, some some basic questions. Number one, what is a tithe? You, now, if you saw on Sunday, hopefully you got a, a vivid illustration of what a tithe looks like, all right? So we're going to look at that tonight uh, and really kind of explain the Hebrew word tithe or tithe that we get tithing from. Uh, why should you tithe? What is the purpose of a tithe? Why did God uh, uh, put it in place? Why would he allow for us to have, you know, to tithe? Uh, what is the difference in tithes and offerings? Now, we probably won't get to offerings this week. Uh, so we'll probably push offerings on Sunday for preaching and for teaching next Wednesday. Um, so we that's what we'll probably do. But I put it up there anyway, just to see if we could get to it. And, and do I prioritize my church when I give? What I mean by that? Uh, do you make your, your storehouse giving a priority? All right. Uh, do I only give when I attend church? Which means if you don't attend church, do you not give? So let's jump right in. Now, let's understand the time. Now, I, I got to say this because uh, we live in a Google age. We live in a time where, you know, we can Google.com, anything we want to know. The only, the only issue uh, with having information at your fingertips is understand that every place you may go uh, may be slanted by the person who wrote it. All right. Always remember that every time you go to a website to something like that, remember, especially if you're doing research for, for study, remember that whoever wrote it may have a bias or a slant or an angle that they're trying to achieve. That's why it's vital that you have proper uh, uh, study tools uh, when you seek to study the Bible. All right. Uh, and I'm talking about things like a concordance, like proper commentaries, things of that nature. So the Bible is clear as it relates to tithing, all right? It says that that, that tithing is a, is a biblical principle for us to give to God. Now, we've already stated last week uh, that God owns everything. That was the stewardship principle. He owns everything, including me and you. And so then one of the things that we understand is that, 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 that understanding the concept of tithing can unlock the key for spiritual growth. 
Now, let's go back. If you think, remember, I told you uh, that when you go to Genesis chapter two, chapter one, when, when, well, when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, you'll see that type, that that the tree in the middle of the garden was a type of tithe, right? It was it was there for them to be able to make the decision not to touch what God told them not to touch. Now that is that is a what we call a typological or type or and shadow of a type of tithe where the tithe belonged to the Lord. And as a result, we are not supposed to touch what belongs to the Lord. So tithing then can be a source for spiritual growth. For example, if it, even over the last week and a half, you should have grown in your understanding of tithing, all right? You should have grown and it should have unlocked some, some growth keys, if you will, in your own personal, personal life. So tithing then, can be a source of joy. When you understand that the tithe is not to meant to is not meant to take from you, is meant to give to you. It's not meant for you to be restricted, but it is meant for you to reverence. Somebody put that in. The tithe is not meant to restrict us. The tithe is meant for us to reverence or revere God. Somebody put that in. The tithe is not meant to restrict you. God is not trying to take from you. He wants you to reverence him. He wants you to revere him. He wants to see if he has our heart. So tithing in can be a great source of freedom because we know that whenever we obey God, that brings joy, that brings liberation, that brings freedom, which helps us understand even more what Springfield is all about. We are to be a place where, 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 where we seek to bring that liberation, where we seek to bring that freedom, where people seek to advance the kingdom of God. So the word tithe or tithe simply means tenth. Now, you've heard me say a dime of every dollar, one of every 10, but the Hebrew word tithe or tithe literally means 10th, all right? 10th, a 10th of one's increase. Now, someone may say, well, why would, why would it be the 10th? Why the 10th part? Well, that was the part that God devoted to, that would be his. Now, here's the key. If you notice on Sunday, I made sure uh, that the deacons, as they took the pieces or the other items from our house and put it in God's house, they did it first, which means that the tithe, hear me, was, was something that came from the individual first before anything else was given. So think of it like this. The moment that, 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 that Israel received increase because it was an agricultural society, the moment its crops produced, it didn't feed everybody else. It didn't barter with other people. The first thing it did was give a tithe or 10% to the temple, which means if they had 100 apples, they made sure they took 10 to the temple, all right? So, so, so tithing then is a word that means 10th of one's increase. It's the 10th of one's income. It is the 10th part that is devoted and given to God first. Now, why is that so important? Because remember, what we do first shows our priority. What we do first shows what really has our heart. So, so think of it like this. Whatever you do first is really what have your heart. Isn't it amazing uh, for Black Friday, people will, will, will eat and not go to sleep, will camp out to be the first one to get those new Jordans or the first one to get those Xbox Fives or PlayStation Fives. I mean, they'll put up a tent, have a little TV, have some popcorn and some, and some little warmers. I know we don't do that. No, not y'all. Mm -mm. but, 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 but when we get that good sale, we will, we will make sure that we in line and we'll stay in there. We'll do what we have to do, right? But here is the kicker. We got to make sure that nothing or no one takes priority over God. God is a jealous God. He tells you, have no other God before me. Now, you may say, well, Rem, I don't bow down to no little statue. I, I serve Jesus. I, I serve the Lord. I get it. But watch this. You may not be bowing down physically to something else, but your actions dictate what's in your heart. Come on, lean in with me. Stay with me tonight. Which means that the moment you begin to give to something other than God first, then that becomes the thing that has priority. All right. Now, I'm going to mess with y'all a little bit, which means if you got your, uh, your electric bill automatic pay, you got your car note automatic pay, you got your, uh, 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 your hair appointment automatic, right? <laughs> you're going every other week, whatever the case may be. But yet when it comes to God, 
it's a major decision. Isn't it amazing that we don't trust God enough to say, God, I, I, I'm going to automate what I, what I want to give to you. I love you enough that it is not even a thought, right? So here's the kicker. Do you set aside what belongs to God first before you start paying out to other people? Oh, this is good tonight. Because here is why. Because the tithe is holy. Somebody put that in the chat. The tithe is holy. It is holy. And because it's holy, we ought not touch holy things. Come on. I'm going to pick up speed. Grid move faster. So we can't touch that which is holy. Y'all remember, y'all remember uh, when the Ark of the Covenant was being transported from uh, um, to Jerusalem and, and, and David had the men bringing it, but they put it on the ox of, of, of uh, uh, they put it on the back of an ox, but it was never meant to be on the back of an ox. It was meant to be carried by poles by men, right? They had poles that went through the, the, through the, through the actual um, Ark of the Covenant to hold it, how to hold it, had instructions because God always gives you instructions on how to handle holy things. Somebody put that in the chat. God always gives us instructions on how to handle holy things. And so the moment they tried to do something right, right? The moment they tried to do it, they, it was good to bring it back to Jerusalem, but the fact that you did the right thing the wrong way will mess you up. Somebody put that in. You can have a good heart, but if your heart is not respecting of that which is holy, see, we don't like to talk about holy, right? Holy means it's reserved for God. It's not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Th that is why, that is why uh, when they, I don't know if you ever studied the tabernacle. Maybe we're going to have to study the tabernacle one time where we, we'll look at how they, in the tabernacle, they had something called showbread, right? And, and that was in the, that was, that was in the tabernacle. You couldn't, you couldn't go in the tabernacle and eat the Lord's bread. It belonged to him. But how many of us misunderstand the fact that because it comes into your account, don't mean it's all yours. So the tithe is holy. It does not belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. So y'all know what happens when, 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 they, when David ends up, the ox stumbles. And guess what happened? They try to catch it. And what happens? Uzziah dies, right? The ox stumble, he catches it, and he dies. Now, now here's what's interesting. Why did he die? Because he did not have the grace to touch that which was holy. And when we, when we begin to take and to touch and to use that which is holy, something that God has reserved as sacred for himself, we run the risk of hurting us. That's where you get Malachi. Well, he says, look, Israel, you hurting yourself. Don't listen. Okay, put this in the chat. When you choose to not give to God, you are not hurting God. Somebody listen to me tonight. You ain't hurting God when you don't give. He owns it all. When you choose not to give, you're not hurting God. So, so look at Leviticus chapter uh, 27, verse 30. Look at what it says. It says right here, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to who? Come on, the Lord. Somebody just put the Lord in. Put it in. It belongs to the Lord. It's right there in Leviticus. It belongs a tithe of, er say everything, every single thing. That meant whether it was grain, whether it was apples, whether it was figs, a tenth of everything that Israel produced because it was an agricultural society was to the Lord. It says whether grain from the soil or fruit from the tree. Y'all know how we do. Y'all, you know, we can get real slick, can't we? Well, the Lord didn't say uh, uh, if it was over here. Well, the Lord didn't say I tie from overtime. You know, I just try to tie from the regular time. Well, you know, do, and here's another one. And am I supposed to be doing my gross or my net? And see, we, we get into splitting heads, right? And so the question, I always ask people, do you want a gross blessing or a net blessing? <laughs> That's what I always ask people, right? And, 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 and I always say this, well, what did you earn? Did you earn a gross or did you earn a net? The only reason you got a difference in a gross and a net, watch this, is because the government took your gross and gave you a net. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Huh? You wouldn't have no net if it weren't for the government taking it. <laughs> so the government said, you can pay the Lord you want to, but we ain't going to wait for you to pay us. Give, me, give, me, give, it, give it to me first. So before, now here, now why would, 
what, what, why does God want us to give to him? Because he wants us to reverence him. He wants, look at what it says in green. It is holy to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. So when we begin to understand that the tithe is holy to the Lord, so then the tithe then becomes an act of faith that helps us keep our priorities straight. Yeah, how many people can know we, we can get out of line sometimes? And so the tithe helps us keep our priorities straight. It reminds us that we don't own anything in this life, right? But it was not some volitional offering. It was a commandment, right? It reminds us and says, if I do this in the right spirit, it'll produce a blessing later on. So giving to God is a privilege and an opportunity to invest in his kingdom. Somebody put that in. See, start to see this not as a burden, but a privilege. What's the privilege, pastor? God trusts you enough to return it. Oh, that's a privilege. Oh my goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see, you ain't giving everybody a key to your house because they don't have that privilege. So some of you took the keys from some of your, your, your family members from your house because they that privilege is gone. But what God says is, I've given you the privilege to return to me what belongs to me. So, so then the tithing is how we measure our faithfulness to God as it relates to our, one of the areas of stewardship, right? So if, when we begin to tithe, it is our floor, not our ceiling. It is the starting point, not the ending point. And I wish I had time to really dive into some of this. So, so, so when you read the Bible, very seldom, or better, matter of fact, and, and, and I'll go out and say, it, you won't find where it says, give your tithes. Did y'all know that? If you, if you do research, it won't, you won't find the word give, you won't find the word give with tithes. You will find the word bring the tithe and you will find the word pay the tithe. But why don't you see the word give your tithe? Well, here's why. You can't give something that ain't yours. <laughs> How you going to give a tithe? That, that's like say, that's like you saying, I'm going to give these shoes away. And, and, and they somebody else's shoes. I wish you would give my shoes away. They're not your shoes to give away. Look, you, anybody ever had somebody do that? They volunteer you for something. And you're like, wait, listen, you don't, 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 don't volunteer me for stuff. You don't know how my time roll. You don't know what I got going on. And so what God is saying is, as it relates to the tithe, I need you to know that that belongs to me. So, so then it's where we start. So we don't, we, we, we pay the tithe, we return the tithe, we bring the tithe, right? Because we trust that God, if we obey you, you'll take care of our needs. You will enable us to live on the, the 90s. God, we know that when we do what you say first, then you bless the rest. That's why Proverbs 3 and 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth. Y'all remember the scripture we talked about last week, right? Deuteronomy 8, 18. It is the Lord who gives us the ability to get wealth. Now Proverbs 3 and 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth. So when you get whatever you get, make sure you have first fruits of all your crops. Make sure you give to the Lord first because the Lord is the one who gave you the ability to be able to get it. So the tithe then, I put it right here, is not something that should be given. It's not something that should be given or not given at our discretion. You don't get to determine if you tithe or not. You don't get to make that choice. It's a command that we do it. So when we bring the tithe, it's an act of obedience and submission to God. It, it is the starting point of our obedience. It's where we start. All right? That's why I said, I put it right there. The Bible uses the word pay, not give, in reference to the tithe. It'll tell you to give your offering. Now, why does it say give offerings? Well, because the offering is based on the 90 that is left after you tithe. Oh, you know what? I'm teaching tonight. Ooh, this is good stuff. Yes, indeed. It, it is what's based. It is, see, you give an offering from the 90, not from the 100. Don't, 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 don't say, well, I'm just going to give an offering this week. I'll time next week. You can't do that. Unless, you're, unless the offering you said is the amount of the time. So, so, so we pay time because it does not belong to us. All right? And so tithing is the primary mechanism by which believers actively participate in God and building God's kingdom on earth. Look, look at what Deuteronomy 14 says, 22. 
be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year, right? There, there it is right there. What you produce each year, set aside a tenth of it, right? Eat the tithe of your grain, your new wine, your olive, and your firstborn of your herds and the flock in the name in, in the presence of the Lord at the place he chooses your dwelling for his name, so that you may learn to revere the Lord as always. Now, now this is interesting. This is where a lot of people do research and they're getting to like how you, you know, you you give a tithe to your to the to the to the church. Then some people say you save a tithe and you live on this, and you live it. A lot of that comes from Deuteronomy 14, right? But when we begin to understand that, that, that I put it in yellow, that we may learn to revere the Lord your God always. What he says is when you pay the tithe, it teaches us to reverence God, not sometimes, but always, which, what, which is what happened when Israel failed to do so. All right, so choosing to tithe. Now, I wish it was a lot of gray area with this. And, and, and let me say this. Churches, some churches need to repent. <laughs> I talk, Pastor. Because what we do is we give people an area that does not exist in God's word. We, you know, we I've seen churches put up all type of tithing schedules where you know you can't tithe the 10, tithe the three. You can't tithe the three, tithe the five. I've seen, I've seen, listen, I've seen churches engage upon any way to try to get people to, to, to give. But here, you only get two choices. One, either return the tithe or two, steal the tithe. That's it. Those are your choices, right? You either make the choice to return it or steal it. And that's what the Bible says. This ain't what Pastor Hinton making up. So, so, so we don't get the right to make people feel good in their disobedience. Somebody put that in the chat. Yeah, I know you love sister so-and-so and you love brother so-and-so and they always at the church every time the door is open. I don't care how many times they at the church every time the door is open. And, and see, we got to be careful because some folks say, well, you know, I work for the church. I come out and do this for the church so I don't have to give. The devil is a liar. So now you can work your way into obedience. And that's, if you believe you can work your way and not have to give, then now you feel like you can work your way for salvation. And we are not saved. We are saved by grace, not by works, so that no man can boast. Where my Bible readers at? Right? So, 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 so we're saved by grace. So we get to make the choice. Do we return it or do we steal it? Somebody put it in. Now, every week. That's why giving is a it, 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 tithing is a litmus test. Every week, God is asking you this question: Are you gonna return it or are you gonna steal it? In your heart, is it, is it, is it? obedience or disobedience every week or okay let me stop saying every week every chance you receive increase all right i know people may not get paid every week may get paid every other week may get paid once a month all right however you get paid you get paid right and 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 when you receive that increase you got to make a choice do you return the tithe based on that week that two weeks that job you did, if you have your own business, right? That job, or are you gonna steal the time and keep all of it for yourself? So we got to make the choice. So we have to choose to tithe. Now, why is this so important? Watch this. Because once you get a revelation that the tithe belongs to God, you're more inapt to pay your tithes. Does that make sense? Once you get a revelation, that's just a big word for saying, once you get an understanding, once you see that the tithe don't belong to you, you're more than apt to pay it, all right? It's, it's kind of like what mama say, when you know better, you do better. Come on, talk to me. You know, we can, I used to always say, mama, I ain't know. She said, all right, all right, all right, I'll take it the first time. But the second time, don't, tell, don't come to me telling me you ain't know. No, you knew. And when you know better, you ought to what? Do better. So once we get this revelation that the tithe belongs to God, we're more inapt to pay our tithes. All right? Because here's why. The revelation ought to produce obedience. Somebody put that in. 
Revelation ought to produce obedience. See, revelation is why Jesus taught in parables. Do y'all know that? Jesus used stories to teach kingdom principles so that he could bring revelation and revelation always precedes obedience. Come on, y'all. All right, I, I use my, I, 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 take Sunday for instance. I use the illustration to bring revelation and the illustration that brought revelation ought to bring obedience. You should say, oh, that was good, Pastor. Cool, good illustration. I see my house. I see God's house. That's illustration, revelation, application. Somebody put those three words in. Illustration, revelation, application. In order to obey God's word, you always got to have some illustration, revelation, and application. Even if you don't have the illustration, you ought to have the, the, the revelation. That's why Jesus says stuff like the kingdom of God is light. There was a man who went away. There was a parable of a lost coin. There's a, the, Jesus told stories so that he could help people to illustrate it, then bring the revelation so that they could have some application. Jesus, woman caught in adultery, he bends down and writes on the ground. And whatever he writes is illustrative enough that it brings some revelation. And everybody who had a stone put down the stones and left, and Jesus said, okay, here's the application. Where are your accusers? They were gone. He said, well, get up, go on about your business and sin no more. Get it? Illustration, revelation, application. Did somebody put it in that chat for me? All right, I, I ain't have it up. All right, so let's keep going. So now, so 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 you and I, we got to understand the devil will, he's the prince of lies. We understand that, right? John 10 and 10 says that the devil, what the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. So now we understand then that 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 the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says, I come, Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it to the abundance, to the full. Remember, what is the benefit? And one of the benefits of, of, of tithing is what? We're blessed. We don't tithe to get blessed, but when we do tithe, we are blessed. So if the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, you got to understand that the devil will do everything in his power to keep you from being blessed. To keep you from being obedient. Why does the why doesn't the devil want us to be obedient? Well, he wasn't obedient. Think about it. If the devil wasn't obedient, why does he want you to be obedient? He doesn't. He had one job. You just keep praising worship going to, 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 to who it belongs to. But sometimes when you get busy doing your thing, you think it's about you and not about the one you're giving it to. Ooh, that'll preach right there, won't it? Because sometimes when we get our little, our little increase on every other Friday, or whenever the Lord lets you come up, right? You start thinking it's about you. And you done figured out everything you need to do, and you forgot who gave you what you have. So the devil walks, works hard to prevent us from tithing. He works hard to get us to operate in fear rather than faith. Somebody put that in. See, see. <clears throat> that's why if he can get you to believe that if you tithe, the Lord won't take care of your needs, he got you. It's a faith thing. It's a trust thing. I said it on Sunday. How can you trust God for heaven and not trust God with your finances? How can you trust God for healing and not trust God for where you are right now? We sing it, and all the songs about, I will trust in the Lord. I mean, we sing it, but do we believe it? So, so when we choose not, watch this. I want you to hear me. When we choose then not to, to, to give to God, when we choose then that, that or, or think that if I, if I tithe, I'm going to have left for myself, then you, you put yourself in a disobedience, and Malachi says he will protect us, but when you put yourself in disobedience, you pull yourself from out under God's protection. I wish I had time Sunday, I would have done it. I would have got an umbrella, open up the umbrella, and show what it was like to be under the protection of God. But, but when you choose not to tithe, God said, I can't bless or protect the disobedient. That is makes sense. Why? Doesn't it make sense why, why, why tithing is such a contention in some churches? 
or why tithing could be such a struggle. Because the benefits are enormous. And the enemy is the author of confusion. He wants us to be discombobulated. He wants you to be double-minded because a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all their ways. So when we, when we choose not to pay tithes, our disobedience cuts us off from the protection of God. And when we choose not to pay tithes, watch this, it puts us in an enemy's territory and gives Satan prime opportunity to wreak havoc in our lives and in our finances. So what we got to do is to reject the choice to, 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 to acquiesce to the enemy's manipulation and devastation. What we got to do is say, you know what? Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. See, the, one of the problem is, problems are, or one of the, pro, yeah, one of our main issues, let me say it that way, is that ain't nobody, don't nobody have fear of the Lord anymore. We, I'm, even in the Lord's house, we do any and everything we big and bad enough to do. Come on, y'all know we do. We do, and, or we try to. And part of the reason is, we think it's our house and not his house. But it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So what he's saying is, if you're going to tithe, you better remember that it's, it's, it is the beginning of knowledge where you trust who God is. Now, I'm going to run through this scripture because I'm, you know, I'm preaching through this on Sunday. So I'm not going, I'm just trying to show you just, just some, some aspects of it real quick. Malachi, excuse me, 3, 8, and 9 says, will a man rob God, a mere mortal? Yet you rob me, but you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you're under a curse, the whole nation, because you're robbing me. Verse 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat or food in my house. Test me, this says, the Lord Almighty, and see, if I will not throw open the, the floodgates or windows of heaven and pour out so much of a blessing that you won't have room enough to store it or to receive it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines of your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Check this out. So why did the Lord have to say, bring the whole tithe? See, when, when you read scripture, and I tell my boys this, if they read a story and you see something that's in the story or in the scripture, ask yourself, why is it there? Why would Malachi tell Israel to bring the whole tithe? Can I tell you why? Because they, they were given something that wasn't the whole tithe. <laughs> it's just that simple. Then he says, bring the whole tithe. Bring it first. Whenever you receive increase, bring the whole tithe first. Bringing the whole tithe first is an act of obedience and submission to God. Refusing to bring the whole tithe is an act of rebellion and theft to God. When you commit, when you commit thievery, right? Theft, grand theft. Some of us create, we, we got grand theft going, right? When we choose to keep the tithe, we're we, 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 we thieving. We, we, we're, now, now, my mama said, if you lie, you steal. <laughs> but, so here's the thing. You say, well, I ain't lying. No, if, you, if you're not giving to God what belongs to God, that's a lie. So when you make the decision to rob God of the tithes and offerings, you're under a curse. But when you pay or return the tithe, you can break the financial curse over you and your family. Because what happens? It happens that if you bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, there'll be food or meat in my house. Now, I'm just going through it real quick. What does that mean? The purpose of the tithe is to do God's work. So adequately support the spiritual leaders. Make sure the gospel is carried around the world. Make sure we have facilities to house ministry. Make sure programs and ministry can be done to meet the community. That's what it means to have food in my house. Because watch this. How can you have food in your house and God not have food in his house? How can you have 90% to do what you need to do, but you don't want to give God nothing? And he didn't want to give you the ability to be able to run your house. So he says, bring the whole tithe in the storehouse, so there may be what? Food in my house. Now, I highlighted storehouse because this is where a point of contention can be in the body of Christ. Storehouse is vital to understand how we give. He says the storehouse, now, during the time this was written, 
The temple was literally called a place of storehouse. Right? It was called your storehouse, place where they worship. It was the storehouse. Why is that? Because they would bring their 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 barley or whatever, and there was an actual storehouse where it would be stored. Right? But for us, we get to bring the storehouse, or we get to bring the tithe, which is God's portion, to where? To his house, which is our storehouse. So what happens at God's house? Think of it. Right now, we can say that we're in the storehouse. We're at God's house because the church ain't a building. If you think the church is 508 P Street in Washington, D.C., you already missed it. The, the, the pandemic showed us that the church wasn't a building. And this church is right now trying to protect the building and missing the fact that they're missing the people to go in the building. So, so that word, that word for church or it is ecclesia, all right? Ecclesia. I, I should have put it in the notes. Ecclesia just means the called out ones, right? It's the church. And so that ecclesia are the ones that are supposed to give to that place. Right? So that storehouse is where we should pay the tithe. Now, how do you know where your storehouse is? Your storehouse is the place where you are fed the word of God. Mm. Come on. So that means if you eating right now, that's a, okay. How do you determine your storehouse? Where are you fed consistently? I ain't talking about where you eat at every now and then. I'm talking where are you fed consistently? That's your storehouse. And a storehouse is the place where, okay, here's how you know if you got a storehouse. If you can go to a place and you can take something and say, I ain't going through this right now, but I can file this, I can store this away later on, for later on and be able to go back and say, you know what, Pastor Hinton talked about something. I'm going to go back to a sermon he preached and that'll give me some insight on, that's how you know where your storehouse is, where you receive information, inspiration, revelation, all right? It is where you are fed and taught and preached the word of God. So that's where you tithe. Amen, somebody. Okay? So we don't get to decide what to do with God's money or where to bring it. Now, here is why, I, I got to say this, here is why you don't get the right to break up the tithe. I know some people say, well, I'm going to give 2% to United Way, 5% to, to, to the Boys Club of America, then I'm going to give 2% to the church, and before you know it, they've tried to break up because what they're thinking is, it's charitable giving. Your charitable giving is not given to God. You're, because watch this, your offerings could be seen as charitable giving, but your tithe belongs to the Lord. And here it is. Just because you helped little Neek Neek, when little Neek Neek was going through, she needed some help because her car broke down. So you helped little Neek Neek get new tires and you took it from your tithe. You don't get the right to determine what God does with God's money. Oh, I'm talking good. Oh, I'm talking good. I'm talking good. I'm talking good. I, you know, I'm 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 a pat, pat, pat myself because here is why we think that doing good is doing God. Y'all hear me? So what we have to do is we have to know that the tithe belongs to God. God has nothing against. Thank you, Deke, for that in. He has nothing against you and I helping other people. But can I tell you something? Oh, somebody put this in the chat. Now, this might hurt somebody's feelings because y'all know how we feel about family members sometimes. But watch this. Sometimes some of your family members can't experience God because you're too busy being their God. Y'all hear what I said? Yeah, every time they fall, you helping them right up. God can't even help them up because you helping them up. Mm-hmm. It's quiet. Y are y'all hearing me tonight? So what? Oh, can I? I'm gonna say it one more time. I'm gonna say it a different way. Their inability to plan does not become your emergency. <laughs> Somebody put that in the chat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Their inability to plan does not become your emergency. So now you gotta figure out how to help them, and you can't give what you're supposed to give to God because you gotta figure out how to help them. When watch this. When they've spent money on what they wanted and they come to you and ask you for what they need. <laughs> oh, I'm talking good tonight. 
You see that? All right. So, 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 you got. Listen, you can give, but just understand where the tithe belongs, because God gives the vision, and as He gives the vision, He won't give a vision and not touch the hearts of people to be able to provide for the provision. So, and 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 that's we'll talk about that next week because when we start looking at offerings, that's something totally different than tithes. See, tithes is a, tithes is about operation right? Sustaining the temple. When you get the offerings, you'll see whenever they wanted to build a temple, that was offerings. Whenever they wanted to do something special for the temple, that was offerings above and beyond the tithe. All right, let's keep going. Time is rolling. So look at what Malachi says. He says, put me to the test. Put God to the test. He says, prove me in this. Prove me and see. Now, 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 y'all know, y'all know I've already been saying it. Coming up next month, we're going to start our 90 day time challenge, or what I'm calling our prove me challenge, where I'm, we're going to have 90 days to prove God. And because this is the only place where God gives us permission to prove him. Everywhere else, he says, don't test me. So God says, test me, prove me, provoke me, challenge me. He says, test me in this and see if I want to open the windows of heaven or the floodgates of heaven. So God commands and gives us permission to place the almighty on trial. Woo, did y'all hear what I said? Did y'all hear what that, boy, look, I wrote that. Listen, y'all gotta hear it again. God gives us permission to put God on trial to see if he gonna provide. I know some of y'all thinking, what are we talking about a 90 day time trial? I don't believe in that. It's right here in your Bible. I just put, I just put a timetable to it, say 90 days. It ain't, if God don't do nothing, 90 days stop. <laughs> but I ain't got to worry about that. You ain't going to stop because the God we serve, he always stays true to his word. So God says, look, put, put me to the test. See, see, put me on trial and watch what I do. I, I underlined it. This is the only place where God instructs us to prove him. And it's the, isn't it amazing? This is the only place where God says, prove me, but it's the only place where we withdraw from proving God. It's the only place where God says, challenge me, and it's the only place where we won't take up the challenge. It's the only place where God says, test me, and it's the only place where we say, nah, I'm good. All right, let's keep going. He says, if you do that, open up the windows of heaven. Now, I'm going to go through this quick because I got a, a, a part I want to get to. We understand that divine response to people's faithfulness is open up the floodgates of window of heaven and pour out an abundance of blessings. That abundance is one that speaks of outpouring. And God has promised to honor those who honor him. Remember that Proverbs scripture said, honor the Lord with the first fruits, right? So God says, when you honor me, I honor you. In the sense that I'm going to return bountifully to those who have given. All right, I ain't got time to keep going to that. But the other part was divine protection. We, we illustrated that on Sunday. Now, in case you don't know it, the enemy always tries to take from you. He is never, okay, he is never trying to help you. He is always against you. He, that's why we call him the adversary. He is always going against you. He is always seeking to come against the work of the church. Which is why, y'all, this, see, see, listen. The Bible says we got the power to what? Rebuke the devil and he will what? Flee. That's what scripture says. Rebuke the devil and he will flee. But, but what's interesting is when it comes to giving, God says, if you obey me, I will do for you and you ain't got to do it yourself. We don't know when to shop. You should have got up and ran around your kitchen table. I mean, you, you should have just left. Everybody's Zoom screen should be empty right now. Your boxes ought to be blinking and everybody ought to be running right now because God says, I will do for you what I told you you had to do yourself. And that is rebuke the devil. That is, that. okay, Matthew chapter four. Jesus rebuked the devil. He said, look, get thee behind me, Satan. Right? So what, what God says is if you obey me in this area, I will take care of the enemy in this area for you. I will make sure 
that that I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not chop their fruit before it's ripe. I'll make sure that any and everything that's seeking to come harm and, and deal with the night, I'll make sure that your fruit don't rot on the ground, ground that, 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 that you are productive. God is willing to fight for anything and everything that's seeking to stop what he's doing in your life. All right, let's keep going because I got to get to this part I'm trying to get to. Now, I just tried to sum it up. A picture of Malachi chapter three. Three areas, God's will, the church's means, and the believer's blessing. Somebody put that in. How you get that? If you sum up that whole Malachi 3, 6 through 12, God's will for us to tithe. It's God's will for us to bring the tithes into the storehouse that they may be meat in his house. That meat then, from us doing God's will, it produces the church's means. Y'all see that? God, look, so there may be meat in my house, says the Lord, right? And if you do that, then I open up the windows of heaven Pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive, and I rebuke the vow. So that becomes the, the believer's blessing. God's will, church's means, believer's blessings. Y'all see that? God's will is that I tithe. When I tithe, the church has means to do ministry. When the church has means to do ministry, then the result of me obeying God for his will is I'm blessed. <laughs> Y'all seeing it? All right. All right, let's keep going. So then, <clears throat> so now, now I'm, I'm gonna have to skip some of this. I told you I got a little excited. So this is when Abraham, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. This is when Abraham tied to Melchizedek, Melchizedek. Now, this is important because this is the first place where the tithe was recorded in Genesis 14. So write this down. Now, now I, I, know, I know because I pastor a biblically astute church, and one of the first people going to say is, well, pastor, he tied to Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Here's what happened. So Abram, now remember Genesis chapter 12, he tells him to leave, right? God tells Abram to leave, right? But by 14, he ends up fighting in Keldama and, and the king's allied with him. He comes to the king of Sodom and meets him in a valley, right? Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God. So watch this. Melchizedek was a, was a priest of the Most High God. So Abram then says, blessed by Abram, God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to the Most High who delivered your enemies into my hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything that he had. Now, I'm not going to read all of Hebrews. But when you read Hebrews chapter 7, 1 through 10, it explains Genesis 14, 17 through 20, where it talks about how Abraham gave a tenth of everything to Melchizedek, verse, three, uh, verse 2 says, which means king of righteousness. Then he also, king of Salem, which means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without the beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God. So now what do we see? that's happening with Melchizedek. Melchizedek becomes typologically a type, a shadow of God. See that? He gave him a tenth, a tenth of all the plunder. Now the law requires the descendant of Levi collect the tenth from the people, and that is their fellow Israelites that they are descended from. So he said, as a result, you see how it was put in place. Now, I just gave a quick little synopsis. We're made aware of the person Melchizedek who uh, uh, Abraham pays a tithe to. Uh, Melchizedek was what they call a type of Christ, typologically, uh, in the fact that it was his priestly ministry. He was a priest of the Most High God. Jesus becomes a high priest, right? Uh, so Abraham returns the tithe, okay? Uh, he does it in gratitude to the authority of God and to the blessing that God bestowed upon him, all right? Tithe in the New Testament, real quick. And I put this in here for one reason and one reason only, because people seek to say that the tithe is, is caught under the law. Well, the tithe pre predated the law. For those who know Bible, I just showed you that Abraham tithed in Genesis 14. For those of us who know about the law, the law doesn't show up to Exodus, y'all. 400 and some years beforehand, I mean, afterhand, excuse me. 
So here's what Jesus says. And I want you to catch this, Matthew 23, 23. Jesus says, look, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you've neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Wait a minute. You hear what Jesus said? Jesus said, Pharisees, you got right the tithing. You got right a tenth of your spices, your mint, your dill, and your cumin, right? But you neglected some important matters. What, what, what are you saying, Jesus? Well, you neglected the fact that you still should be seeking justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Now, if it was not for us to tithe, Jesus would have said, you ought not be tithing in the first place. He says right here, make sure you don't neglect the latter, but you also pursue justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Is that making sense? All right, so benefits from tithing, real quick. One, God is pleased by our obedience. Two, God is honored by your faithfulness. Three, tithing helps to keep your priorities straight. Four, you're eligible for a blessing. Five, it guards Christians from selfishness. Six, God loves a cheerful giver. Seven. Tithing supports the Great Commission. What's the Great Commission? Go ye therefore to all the nations, baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? That's where we go out. Uh, I taught about, I think I taught on that for um, Vacation Bible School. Um, a part of one of the lessons on it. Tithing ensures your needs will be met. Tithing helps meet the needs of other people through the local ministry, right? Tithing reminds us that God is the true owner of everything that we have. All right. So what are some reasons why people don't tithe? I'll give you a few, and then I'll let you go. One, people say stuff like, I can't afford to tithe. Now, where do y'all think these, these ideas come from? The enemy. I can't afford to tithe. Well, God owns it all. I'm afraid. You, any, anything I put up here, you can find scripture to go against it. I can't afford to tithe. Well, you know what the, the word says. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory or he supplies seed to the sword. I'm afraid to tithe. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I just talked talk to you about tithing was under the law, right? And no longer necessary. That's what people say. We just read a scripture about that. What I give won't, you know, people, some people think like this. What I give won't matter anyway. That's a lie. No. Here's a good one. I don't trust the church or preachers. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You, you know what's funny? The church is the only place where people won't give because they want to know what folk going to do with the money when they get it. Here's what's deep. When you go to Target, you give them your money and you don't know what they're doing with it when they get it. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And sometimes they take your money and support candidates for positions that go against That's what right. you believe. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Well, you know, I, 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 I can't control that. Well, you can't. Listen, here, here, is, here, here, here is the beauty of this. Your job is to give. Your job ain't to control, well, you know, I don't trust them. No, 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 no. If, if the preacher is wrong, if I'm wrong, or the church is wrong, God will deal with it. It ain't on you to do it. Okay. I, I, I hear you saying, well, I can't, I can't agree with that. Here's scripture. Who was the treasurer for Jesus? Judas. Judas. And, and, and scripture says that Judas was skimming from the top. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. <laughs> you, you know what that means? Judas was stealing from Jesus. Mm -hmm. So why mm -hmm. didn't Jesus get rid of Judas as the treasurer? He knew what he was doing. Now, right. his was deep. He lets Judas be the treasurer, and then Judas got a nerve to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver when he had access to all of what Jesus had. Everything. Are y'all yeah. hearing me? So, which means then that, that let, let it, listen, let God handle the Judas. You ain't got to do it. Your job is to obey him. 
God will provide through other people. We say that. The church really don't need the money. Yes, it does. In order to function, to do what is being called for us to do. All right. Now, let me give a disclaimer real quick. I'm going I'm to run through these without doing every bullet point, and then I'll take a few questions, and hopefully we were able to, to get through as much as possible on tonight. Reasons to tithe. One, God commands it. He tells us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Okay? So when you give the other charities and ministries, that's what? Offerings. Tithe goes to the local church. Number two, tithe improves God's word is true. God said, if you put me to the test, I'm going to do it. So when we, when we do what God's word says, it proves his word is true. <clears throat> Number three, God rebukes the devourer. We talked about that, right? He challenges every believer to put him to the test, and then he watch, said, watch what I do, and I'll make sure that I take care of others in your life. Teaches me to put God first. Tithe and demonstrate that God is the most important person, or most important thing in our lives. Now, if we refuse the tithe, what we're telling the Lord is, you're really not first. Jesus recognized tithing. We talked about that. Tithing is essential to spiritual growth. Many Christians don't grow spiritually and remain spiritually immature because they're not faithful in obeying God with tithes and offerings. Now, you may say, well, why is that? The Bible says where your heart is, there your treasure is also. Somebody put this in the chat. And, and, I, and I'm not trying to, to, God is not after your money. He's after your heart. If he gets your heart, he got your money. He ain't after, he ain't trying to take all your money. He's after your heart. Here's the next one. Tithe improves you love the Lord. He says, look. Foster, you're frozen. Is he still there? No, frozen. Frozen. It looks like he's still there, but um, we have to wait for there for his end to clear up. Can everybody hear me now? We can hear you now, Pastor. All right, so sorry, so sorry. So that's what happens when you get so excited, you don't even plug your computer up. My computer just went black. I'm like, what is going on? Like, the devil is in it. No, the devil ain't got nothing to do with it. I just didn't plug it up. So sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, okay, I'm going to share this last screen, then I'm going to be done. Thank you all so much for being patient with your pastor. Y'all know I get excited when I teach, and so uh, that's the result. I forgot to even plug it in. All right, here we go. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna share this real quick and then I'll close out uh, with this uh, from current slide. All right, so the slide was, this is, uh, yo, okay, it's essential to growth. Last one was, it's an investment in eternity, which means that when you give, it invests in eternity. And of course, last but not least, you know, and we know we cannot outgive God. We cannot outgive God. All right, all right. Now, I'm going to stop sharing. Now, here is the only problem with what just happened to me. The problem is 
Now, because I just came on, I see none of the chat. So if you had a question, I know, right? If you had a question that you put in the chat, please, if you don't mind, put it back in so I can try to answer it to the best of my ability. I pray uh, that this was uh, some type of a blessing to you. Uh, sorry again for the inconvenience of the, uh, explain the Hebrew. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share that. Uh, So the question is about the Hebrew scripture. So, all right, so, so Melchizedek, right? Oh, let me go back. Uh, here we go. So now I want you to get it. When you get a chance, you read Genesis chapter 12, 13, and 14. 14 is when Abram returns from defeating Keldamar, right? And he, and, and he comes back and he brings a tithe to the king of Salem. What the Hebrew text does, because remember, the Old Testament is concealed and the New Testament reveals. So the Old Testament may not always give you the meaning, but it's always illuminated in the New Testament, okay? So Hebrews 7 says, this Melchizedek, talking about the one from Genesis 14, was king of Salem and priest of the Most High God. So watch this, Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High God. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. You see that? Remember, remember I told you that Genesis 14 was the first recorded place. But we know all the way back to Genesis that the tree is a type of tithe, right? So in Genesis, we see that Melchizedek bought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the Most High. I go over here, and Hebrews, what does it say? He was a priest of the Most High. So we see in the connection, all right? His name meant king of righteousness, but also king of Salem, which means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end, resembling the Son of God, okay? So what is, he, what is the writer of Hebrews saying? The writer of Hebrews, Hebrews is letting us know that this wasn't an ordinary king, but it had some type of divinity to it. Not to say that he was a, a, a god, but he was connected to God in such a way that what? Abraham was willing to tithe to that place because he represented the order of the high priest. Okay? It says, without father and mother, without genealogy, without beginning days of end of life, resembling the son of God as he remains priest forever. Now, doesn't this sound interesting? Who is the one, who is the, 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 the high priest that reigns forever now? Jesus. He's the high priest sitting at the right-hand side of the Father. He, his look, his name meant king of peace, right? Melchizedek's name meant king of peace. Come on, Advent. Jesus was the prince of peace. Y'all seeing the connection there, right? He was without father or mother, without genealogy. Jesus was born of Mary, but impregnated by the Holy Spirit. He remains priest forever. Jesus, well, he is Alpha and Omega, beginning and, you see it? Just as, just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of all his plunder. Now, the law requires the descendants of Levi who become priests to collect a tenth from the people. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Watch this. The Levites, so y'all gonna make me teach tonight. The Levites were those who worked in the temple. Those who had charge of the storehouse. So now it makes sense that they bring it, right? He says right here. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi who became priests to collect the tenth from the people. Now, which means that, that, that tithing did not come under the law. It predated the law, even though it was inclusive in the law. Catch it? Okay. So now the law requires the descendants of Levi who become priests to collect the tenth from all the people. 
that is from their fellow Israelites. Catch it? That's why Malachi said, y'all been robbing God, even though they are also descendants from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descendant from Levi, yet he collected the tenth from Abraham and blessed him on who had promises. And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. In one case, the tenth collected by people who die, but in another case, by he who was declared to be living. So here's what he said. Abraham tied to Melchizedek, who was a type of high priest. Yet we get the privilege of tithing to the high priest who won't die, who will always live, who will, who will reign forever. One might say, verse 9 says, one might say that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham because Melchizedek met Abraham. Levi was still in his body as an ancestor. So we get the privilege, which is why you ought to be glad that you have a Levite priest, pastor, whatever you want to call me, that will teach you to say you return that to the Lord. All right. Hopefully that helped. Did that help, Sister Bass? All right. Any other questions? Let's see. Excuse me. You mentioned earlier about helping family members, them not experiencing God because we are being God. How can we discern? Okay, that's a good question. Key word, Sister Stephanie, is discern. Um, I, I'm not saying in no means not to help family. I'm saying know when to help. Know how to help them. Know the difference between a help and a crutch. And 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 sometimes 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 we have what I call the savior complex, where 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 we like to swoop in and be the savior. Y'all y'all heard me talk about tithing, right? Uh, when I first started with. Me being a youth pastor, four hundred fifty dollars a month. I mean, five dollars a month, rent four fifty. I made it a bit. I made it a point that every time my dad would say you need anything, I would say no, I'm good. Because for me, I want the experience of trusting God. And sometimes we rob people of that experience. Now, I'm not saying you don't you don't help yourself. I'm not saying that at all. But. I am saying if you help them, do it from an empowering standpoint rather than, it's almost like, are you giving a hand up or a hand out? And, and yes, we should help others, but make sure we seek to empower others. Because sometimes we help people just to keep them in a position where we can control them. All right. I uh, hope that helps. Do we have an example of how, how obedience, Paul says, do we have an example of how obedience in stewardship blesses in Malachi, I mean, Matthew chapter 5, 25, 23 is the only time he says good and faithful servant when he is talking about money. So uh, good, good question, Ram Paul. Of course, uh, I did not have time to go through all of them. Um, but I think what the one that you, I mean, let me make sure that, that, that I'm thinking the right one. I think you're talking about the parable of the talents um, in Matthew chapter 25, uh, because you know you have the parable of the talents. Uh, or, or are you talking about, no, you're talking about, yeah, yeah, you're talking about the, the man who goes away and leaves his servants with wealth, five get bags of gold. So this is not the talent. This is the one where the man goes away and leaves them with something. And then he says, one, one doubles it, another one goes away. Then there's finally one who goes and digs a hole and puts the money in the ground. And when he returns, what the one who got five gave them, gives them five extra. The one who had two gets two extra. The one who had one goes and buries it in the ground. And, and he basically said, you, you know, you, 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 you wicked. Why didn't you go and gain interest on it? So that, that's a stewardship principle, which is, him not seeking to invest beyond what he had. So here's another way to look at it. What type of investment are you making in the kingdom? See, if we really believe this, what we're doing now for God should continue after we're gone from earth. Like, like we should already be thinking about what is Springfield going to look like when we're dead and gone? Yeah. 
Yeah. What what who who are we gonna try to reach when we dead and gone? Who who will be able to say, you know what? Sister so and so so the seed back here, and that seed is still perpetuating now. Right? What indelible mark will we make in the earth that will exist for all of eternity? How, how, do we, how, do we, how do we see beyond right here with our kingdom assignment? What do we put in place to make sure that it goes on in perpetuity, right? It keeps going, all right? So, so hopefully I'll answer that question. All right, any other questions? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Any other questions, 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 questions? I like questions. If I can answer them, if I can, I tell you I can't, but I'll try my best. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Any other questions? All right, so with that being said, um, thank you so much for your time, your energy, and effort on tonight. Um, I pray that you were blessed from our time of sharing. Know that Sunday we're going to pick up with offerings, which are above and beyond our tithes and offerings. And, you know, I want you to study something. Um, you won't find a lot of scripture in the New Testament that deals with tithing. You want to know why? Because it, it was already instituted. And so what you see then is more dealt with offerings, <clears throat> right? And so when you start reading uh, 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 a Luke, give and it shall be given back to you, good, pre good measure pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. Those are in reference to offerings. When we start talking about on the first day of week, set aside and give, you know, not grudgingly of a of a necessity, but God loves it. That's that's dealing with your heart as it relates to to giving. Because remember, tithe is what returning and paying. Giving is how we how we usher into the offering area. All right. So, uh, if you're here tonight and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to uh, extend an invitation to you to give your life to Christ. For you to say, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that you're the Christ. And I, I confess with my mouth that you're Lord. And I want you to be Lord of my life. If that's you on tonight, I want to extend to you the invitation for salvation. Secondly, I want to extend to you the invitation for rededication. For you to say, Lord, I tried you before, but I want to try you again. I realize that I messed up. And I want to get back in, into fellowship with you. All right. Third invitation is you want to connect with us. You want to join with us. Uh, you, you may be in the DMV, you would want to join our North Campus, our South Campus, or what we are, 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 are formalizing and, 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 and shaping right now, which would be our Springfield Global Campus, which is our online campuses, uh, which has worship opportunities at 9 and 11. Um, but if that's you on tonight, I want to encourage you, uh, no matter where you live, to become a part of what God is doing uh, here in, in and through us. I believe that God has great things in store for us. If you want to do that and accept Christ on tonight, you can email us at join at springfielddc.org, join at springfielddc.org, and we'll welcome you to the fold and thank God for you. Let me pray for you now. God, I thank you for the blessing that it was to teach your word on tonight. I pray tonight for uh, those who are coming for salvation and rededication or membership to make a decision to trust you with their lives or to connect with us in our efforts to expand the kingdom and to do your word and your will. Thank you, God, that when we've been faithful in, in obeying your word, that you cause, cause us to be blessed and to increase. So God, I thank you now even in advance for how you continuously increase us as individuals and the Springfield Baptist Church. Now, God, I pray for those who, are, who will make the decision on tonight to connect, uh, to, to give their life to you or to rede rededicate their lives because we know, God, that it's all about you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God and amen and amen and amen. All right? Uh, so again, make the decision, spiritual decision for your life, rededicate your life, or connect with us. I would love to be your pastor. Love to help you grow, even if it's from a digital reality. Uh, last but not least, I can't do a whole message on stewardship and not give you the opportunity to give. Amen? So tonight... Uh, as you do each and every Wednesday, uh, you do a great job at, at, at giving on Wednesdays and on Sundays and every other day of the week. And so I'm going to encourage you tonight to be a giver, for you to sow a seed on tonight, several ways to do it. 
Uh, you can do it through Givelify. There's a link that's about to pop up now in the chat or the comment section. You can click that link and you'll be able to give through Givelify. Or if you want to, uh, there it is right there. If you want to um, give through Cash App, simply dollar sign SBC downtown, dollar sign SBC downtown. And we'll thank God all the more for your gifts because we know that God loves a cheerful and happy giver. So thank God for your gifts in advance. I pray tonight you were blessed by the teaching. I pray that you were stretched by the teaching. I pray you learned something that you maybe didn't know or, or got something that you say, Rap, I need to holler at you about it because I don't believe that, but that's okay too. We can talk about it. I'm open. Uh, but I pray that you were blessed uh, tonight uh, as well. All right, I'm going to turn it over uh, to, if there are no more questions, I'm going to turn it back over to Reverend Penix. Is she still on? Yes, and sir, right we'll here. 